tightly to all of your things. And before we head in, we'll hear a little more from Peter Jackson. The Universal Tram is winding its way through a very rough, narrow trail on Skull Island, allowing the visitors a little sneak peek at some of the wildlife of Skull Island. In a sense, this is like a mini sequel, um, a mini continuation. We are just taking the, the Kong and Skull Island and the dinosaurs that we established in our feature film. And this is uh, you know, another day, another incident on Skull Island, using the, the creatures and, and the character and personality of Kong as he appeared in the movie. <laughs> created for us by Peter Jackson and a team of folks at Weta Effects. That's a special effects company based in New Zealand. They just won their seventh Academy Award recently for Avatar The Way of Water. Special effects on that film. Now we have some behind the scenes images on our screens here. And a great shot of the big digital projection screens that surrounded us inside. They're 40 feet tall and 180 yeah. feet long. Some of the biggest screens that are kind in the world. movies of film like Hobbs and Shaw, Captain America, The First Avenger, The Amazing Spider-Man, and Transformers. TV shows as well like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Key and Peele, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and all the procedural crime shows, CSI, NCIS, Criminal Minds, they've all been down there. Coming up on your right, you'll see two retired features of the studio tour, Retired Attractions, The Runaway Train, and it's parked on the Collapsing Bridge. The bridge opened as an attraction on the tour in 1974. It's exactly what it sounds like. The tram would drive across the bridge and it would collapse. Just for fun, for pretend. And then the train was further out on the back lot. It opened circa 1976. 
Also, exactly what it sounds like. It would almost crash into a tram full of guests, but then stop in the nick of time. It used to be featured in some of our commercials uh, for the studio tour back in those days. So it's one of my favorite things about the uh, the back lot is we have this amazing combination of sets that get used all the time by active productions mixed in with attractions just for the studio tour. And in some cases, we keep our retired attractions out and looking beautiful so we can still enjoy them. All right, now we're gonna head deeper to our massive back lot. Still lots to see. Uh, like over on the left-hand side, look at that. It's a parking area. People park their cars there. Uh, anytime you see a car on camera though, that's called a picture car. It's a fancy showbiz term. And up next, we're gonna visit the transportation department of our back lot. On the left, you're going to see some of the most famous picture cars in film and television history. We have, among others, Magnum P.I.'s Ferrari. It's got a Volkswagen engine. A Ferrari engine would have been too loud for filming. We have three futuristic flying cars from Back to the Future 2, the Light Star Pulse, the Ford Edsel, and the Ford Probe. The Flintstones cars are made mostly out of fiberglass. And picture cars are not just literal cars. Picture cars are any vehicle ever featured on camera. So we have more unique ones here. Uh, like you'll see the gyrosphere from Jurassic World coming up. It's missing its glass dome. That part was never real. It was added after filming with CGI, computer-generated imagery. We even have a boat, the Crawdaddy from Jordan Peele's Us, where Winston Duke fought the tethered version of himself. The big tank is made mostly out of wood. It was in Transformers, so picture cars don't even have to be really drivable, necessarily, depending on what a scene calls for, what the filmmaker needs. And we'll see some more famous picture cars now on our screens. coming up on the right hand side a jeep from jurassic park that's a good uh, clue for our next stop on the tour which i'm sure you can figure out but i'm gonna let john hammond do the introduction just to make it official john welcome to jurassic park thank you john that was nice okay we're gonna see a lot of cool things here props boats picture cars all from the original jurassic park trilogy the second film in the franchise was The Lost World, like and the one. camouflage RV coming up on the left was in that film. That was the Mobile Lab, and that is also made mostly out of wood. It was featured in one scene where it dangles off the edge of a cliff. That's so cool. I love that. So because it's made of wood, it's a lot lighter than a real RV, which means it's easier to use in a stunt scene like that. Also less costly. Oh, sorry. We also have real-life dinosaurs here. They like to spit. Sorry. <laughs> I just have a toy of that. We've got one more big dinosaur coming up on the left. That one does not spit. You can look right at it, shake your fist, whatever you want, it's not gonna get you. I can never remember the name of that dinosaur, but there's always like at least one kid in car one that knows the name. Anybody know the name of it? No? Okay, sorry, I put them on the spot, that's not fair. Somebody will know and you can tell me at the end of the tour. I should really learn that though. Anyway, uh, in the Jurassic Park films, they often use rain to hide the suspense of a sequence. Uh, but if you need rain for your movie, you would use weather effects. You would not use real rain. Real rain is worse than useless, actually. I'll explain why. <laughs> uh, first though, we're pulling in now to Old Mexico. These sets were featured in the fourth Indiana Jones film, Big Fat Liar with Paul Giamatti. And Lady Gaga filmed a music video for her song Judas here. But uh, today we're gonna stop in Old Mexico and enjoy a fake thunderstorm created through weather effects. So we've got the thunder to start off. That was excellent timing. Doozy activated the, the weather effects. Thank you, Doozy. And uh, we're gonna get the rain to go with it in just a moment. And we've got a thunderstorm on a sunny day. Very pretty. And you might be able to see where the rain is coming from. Just sprinklers, that's all we need, sprinklers. Uh, they shoot the rain up a little. That means it falls more slowly than real rain would fall. Also, the raindrops are bigger than real rain would be. That's because real rain, it's worse than useless because it's invisible on camera. It moves too fast and real raindrops are too small. So whether it's really raining or not, we have to use this kind of 
uh, weather effect for filmmaking purposes. The thunder's coming out of speakers that are built into the sets. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. That was like a flash flood. For another part of Old Mexico, these sets were featured in the HBO series Westworld, oh. Star Trek Picard, and the iconic music video for the song Escapade by Janet Jackson filmed here. Now from Old Mexico, we're going to head into the Old West. Our western town is called Six Points. It can be seen in the film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and in classic westerns like Destry Rides Again with Marlena Dietrich and My Little Chickadee with Mae West. In Six Points, we have a combination of facades and practical sets. A facade is a kind of set where we just build the front and the sides of the structure, just what the camera sees, and then the audience fills in the rest with their imagination. If the set also has an interior for filming inside and out, then it's practical, like the saloon on our screens. That's what it looks like on the inside. Also, what looks like brick is really fiberglass. We also use a lot of plaster and wood in the set construction. We also have a lot of nice set decoration right now in Six Points. A lot of it is in the form of the signage, like on the left there's a dressmaker and a boarding house, to the right there's a clothing store. Uh, it really helps, you know, set the scene, uh, give it a sense of place. So usually that kind of set decoration is brought in by each individual production and then they take it with them when they leave. In this case, we let some of the signage stay. Uh, the signage was from a movie called Call of the Wild that starred Harrison Ford, filmed here a few years ago, and we decided to, to let them leave their signage behind because it's worked for other productions that have come in since. Uh, TV shows have been here as well, like Killing It, sorry, Craig Robinson, and uh, Quantum Leap, they were here not long ago. We also had a big commercial for The Voice film in uh, Six Points, all the coaches had to stand off with each other. And we are the home of The Voice, all of the live rounds and blind auditions film in our big backlot stage is off to the left, out past the lake. That's also where the movie Us did a lot of filming, starring Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke. The lake on the left is called Park Lake. It was the Black Lagoon in the Universal Monster movie, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Park Lake is not a natural lake. We put it there for filmmaking purposes. It did not just come with the land. That would have been a lucky break, but not likely for Southern California. Uh, some people think the TV show Gilligan's Island filmed at the lake. It did not, but a TV movie spin-off of Gilligan's Island did film at the lake. It took some digging to figure that out, but that is confirmed. Now, at this point, we uh, get to do a safety reminder. By we, I mean me. I want to remind everybody to stay seated during the entire tour. Get the studio's private property, so if you drop your phone or just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the red cord to get my attention, and I'll be back to assist you, but do remain seated on the tram. All right, up next to the right, we're going to visit Little Europe, so-called because these sets often double for different European countries. But in the NBC comedy series, The Good Place, this was the afterlife. You, Ellen Shinsley, are dead. <laughs> to the afterlife, this was also the make-believe country of Genovia in Princess Diaries 2, a royal engagement with Anne Hathaway and Julie Andrews. Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy went on a date here for the film The Muppets. This was Paris, France, first seen in that film. And back in the 1930s and 40s, all of our classic Universal Monster movies filmed here, like Frankenstein, Dracula, The Invisible Man, starring Claude Rains, one of my favorites, and uh, The Wolfman, The Mummy, they all filmed here. Those monster movies were incredibly important to uh, Universal. They gave us a legacy. We're still known for our monster movies. The movies were big hits, so they kept us afloat financially during the Great Depression. They were very, very helpful. Now, coming up next on the left, we have a change of scenery, a backyard, and a house. That's a set that was built for the Hallmark Channel talk show, Home and Family. They filmed here about, for about nine years. More recently, the house was featured in a season one episode of Bel Air. It was the home of the influencer. 
And that house is a practical set, so it does have a full interior for filming inside and out. And when Home and Family filmed there, uh, we were able to get just as close as we just got to the set when they were filming. It was not a scripted show, it was a talk show. Uh, so if you watched Home and Family, sometimes you would see trams go by in the background. We'd wave at everybody, it was super nice. All right, up next we're gonna drive through a sound stage. The entrance can be bumpy, so please hold on to your personal belongings and stay seated. We're gonna see a set in here that looks like a subway station. Okay, it's jumping up the scare 
carpour, and now it's done. Okay, now the shark is <laughs> just lying done. on top of the water. And in a moment, the shark's gonna swim backwards. There it goes. <laughs> It's going to go back under the water to get ready to jump out and scare the next tram. It's actually the shark's d job. It does this all day long. It's a robot. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> robot shark. Uh, it works a lot better than the shark in the original movie Jaws. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It, it didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio. They were always saying, the shark is not working for me. The shark. We just waited around. And those Amity Island sets went by another name on the TV show Murder, she wrote. That was Cabot Cove. shark to the water that was called Singapore Lake. So it's got that many names over the years. Up next to the left, one of our pretend residential streets. The house closest to us with the green roof was Boo Radley's house in the film To Kill a Mockingbird. And on Never Have I Ever, that street is where Paxton Hall Yoshida lives. Then to the right, we have the Chicken Ranch. Here's a new production to the film there. the end of what was Wisteria Lane on Desperate Housewives. It's officially called Colonial Street. There is a production set up uh, down there today. Most people still just call it Wisteria Lane. It's not the official uh, name, but that's how it became so famous. Something else that's become pretty famous in its own right over the years are our trams on the studio tour. Take a look at these tram cameos we've had. We'll be returning to the theme park shortly. Remember to pull the emergency cord if you need assistance and remain seated at all times. On the right, you can see we're on Steven Spielberg Drive. We name all of our roads on the lot after Universal Legends. Uh, next, we're going to turn on to a road named for actress Janet Lee, And here we're going to see some more really cool uh, picture cars. Coming up on the right, one of the first you'll see is Bumblebee. The yellow and black Camaro. That's a Bumblebee from the Transformers film. We also have Dominic Toretto's Dodge Charger from the Fast and Furious movies. A lot of these cars are from the Fast and Furious world. And just around the corner from our picture cars is the creepiest place on the back lot, according to me anyway. It's the Bates Motel. This is where Norman Bates works, the title character from the film, Psycho. And up on the hill we have the Psycho House, the home of Norman's mother. And that is the real house from the film. We're gonna get closer to it. My family watching me. Let them see what kind of a person I am. This is actually my inner monologue when I'm giving tours. It's weird. <laughs> I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. They'll see. My shame will be. That's cool. Crashed airplane. <laughs> Fun stuff. Anyway, past the Psycho House, we're going to see one of the largest sets of movie history from the film War of the Worlds directed by Steven Spielberg. This is called The Crash Set. That is a real plane. It was a retired commercial 747. 
And we'll hear from Steven and production designer Rick Carter. They'll talk a little more about this amazing set. Perfect example of a set that is all designed around the vision of the studio. And it's like, yeah, to sit down and talk about the audio. And I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Keep noticing me. Listen, now, listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Now, close. Come on. Robbie, get in. Get in. And again, that is a real plane. It was a retired commercial 747. It's only on screen for a few moments, really, but Steven Spielberg wanted the real deal. Uh, we've had other productions use the crash set since. Uh, some of the wrecked houses on the right were featured in a commercial for Farmers Homeowners Insurance for many obvious reasons. Uh, TV shows have been here, uh, like Angie Tribeca and Key and Peele, one of my favorites. And because this is such a believable disaster area, we've had real emergency personnel come up here and run disaster drills from time to time. So it's a versatile spot, who knew? Now if you look past the plane and up the hill on the left, you might see some houses up there. Those are real houses. People live up there. So this is their backyard view. I'm sure they love it. Why wouldn't they? Now coming up just behind the plane fuselage, we've got some bonus content. Uh, you'll see a big cabin. Uh, that's a set of, that was originally built for a movie called The Great Outdoors, starring John Candy. That's that movie. Now the cabin, uh, just about, well almost two years ago now, uh, was moved from another location on the back lot. Not far from here, but in order to move the cabin, they had to cut it in half. It was crazy. We saw it one day on the studio tour. We saw one half of the cabin slowly being pulled to its current spot. It was wild. Uh, and since then, they've put them back together and, and reattached the cabin. The cabin's also been seen in uh, shows like Star Trek Picard and Desperate Housewives. Uh, but again, the main event of this area is the big plane crash set from a, a Steven Spielberg film. Actually, that's a big celebrity sighting that I had uh, once on the studio tour. I was uh, giving a tour. We were pulling into the War of the Worlds crash set. And Steven Spielberg was there in a golf cart. And he was waving. And instead of pointing him out, I blacked out. I panicked. Didn't point him out. So I'm the only one who saw him. Because unless I say, there, look, there's something over there, the guests aren't going to look. And uh, so I really whipped it. But at least I got to see him. Now, another great filmmaker that we've been working with a lot more recently is Jordan Peele. And up next, we're going to drive through sets from his latest movie, Nope. Oh, yeah, this I is love that Jupiter's movie. Claim. And here's Jordan Peele. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible mission and bring it to life. This is Jupiter's Planet, a nostalgic, small-time Southern wow. California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Jupe Park. Over there, look into the winking well and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie Kid Share. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? What? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso Experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so alive anymore. Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy of the Golden Rush Frontier town lies a sinister secret. It is smack dab in the center of the UFO hotspot. What's a bad miracle? Welcome to the world of no.
So again, those are the actual sets uh, from the film designed by Ruth DeYoung, the production designer for Nope. After they finished using the sets on location, everything was disassembled and then reassembled for us on the back lot. Is it? Sorry, hang on one second. Oh, this is interesting. Apparently we're getting a phone call from the FBI. Look, this might be more serious than I thought. What just happened? I love This is a secure line. Who are you? I'll tell you who I am, boy. I'm the reason bad guys use a nightlight. <laughs> I'm the reason the boogeyman bends his mama to look under his bed. And I'm the reason you just lost control of this whole operation. Oh. 